These performances are wacky and way over the top. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilariously overacted performances in movies. Well, that's how we do it at the North Pole. Well, that's not how we do it here! Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're focusing on movie performances that are so outlandish that we just can't help but laugh. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? EVERYONE! Number 10. Michael Sheen, The Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 2. I'd like to meet her. As the leader of the Volturi, the vampire known as Aro can read minds through physical contact. In fact, he can read each and every thought. For an acclaimed actor like Michael Sheen, it's a juicy franchise role, one that allows him to have a little fun by fully embracing the character's eccentricities. When Aro meets Renezme, a potentially immortal child, Sheen steals the scene with his overtly creepy dialogue and facial expressions, not to mention his high-pitched cackle. Sheen fully commits to the character, delivering the performance with zero self-consciousness. You can see that he is really enjoying himself. Can we live with such uncertainty? Number 9. Crispin Glover, Charlie's Angels Full Throttle. In this sequel, Crispin Glover's Thin Man helps the Angels dispatch some evil henchmen. Sadly, the character won't survive the sequence, but he does manage to share an intimate moment with Drew Barrymore's Dylan Sanders. Whereas most gentlemen smile following a passionate kiss, the thin man reacts quite differently. After the character rips off an actual chunk of Sanders' hair, Glover flexes his acting muscles by screaming like a maniac, so much that he actually drools a bit. And of course, he's gotta sniff the hair too. Glover does absolutely everything possible to make sure we know that the Thin Man is one creepy fellow. But hey, at least this creep went out like a hero. Mind if I cut him? <laughs> Number 8. William Shatner, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Self-expression doesn't seem to be one of your problems. Captain James T. Kirk is known for his distinct manner of speech. But in Star Trek II, William Shatner shows off a different side, an aggressive side. You've managed to kill just about everyone else, but like a poor marksman, you keep missing the target. After being wounded, the superhuman Khan reveals a shocking truth to Captain Kirk. As his final act of vengeance, he effectively dooms the captain to an eternity of being buried alive in space. Shatner starts strong with the lip quiver, following it up with one seriously furrowed brow. But he truly steals the scene by shaking violently and hilariously before screaming the name of his tormentor. <laughs> Number 7. Sylvester Stallone, Judge Dredd. The effective lethal range is 200 meters. You're safe. In this scene from the much derided comic book adaptation, machismo is on full display. As Joseph Dredd, Sylvester Stallone scowls at his clone brother and one-time fellow judge, Rico, with his chest puffed out and blood dripping from his face. He's angry, and Stallone lets us know by overemphasizing each and every word. Why did you judge me? You killed innocent people. The means to an end. You started a massacre. I caused the revolution. You betrayed the law. Law! Sly's distinct voice and delivery stand out in any role, but with this character, he digs extra deep and makes good use of his facial muscles. The build-up is simply extraordinary, and like all great overactors, Stallone just keeps pushing harder and harder to deliver a lethal dose of action star masculinity. Unsurprisingly, Sly earned himself a Razzie Award nomination. The best thing you can do is kill me. Why? Because it's your only chance. Number 6. Eric Freeman, Silent Night, Deadly Night, Part 2. <laughs> this actor might not have the same caliber of resume as some of the others on our list today, but he's just as qualified when it comes to overacting. Eric Freeman plays Ricky Caldwell, a killer who targets naughty people. His logic is flawed, and his bravado is hilarious to say the least. <laughs> Thank you. 
When Ricky shoots a man taking out his garbage, Freeman delivers his most famous line, complete with crazy eyes and bizarre body movements. It's a sight to behold, and a moment that earned Freeman a place on the Mount Rushmore of great overactors. Garbage day! Huh? No! <laughs> Number 5. John Travolta, Battlefield Earth. Your powers of observation are simply startling. Based on the novel by L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology, Roger Christian's big screen adaptation failed miserably at the box office. While there are many flaws worth mentioning, the greatest, arguably, is John Travolta's troubling performance as Turl. In one particularly hilarious scene, Travolta channels his inner Shakespeare while raising his voice a notch for dramatic effect. While you were still learning how to spell your name, I was being trained to conquer galaxies. On Broadway, this type of acting could earn a standing ovation, but for a feature film, Travolta's performance feels deeply inauthentic and out of place. But hey, we have to applaud him for the inherent comedy of it all. Well, that's why I especially chose you. So you'll keep your side of the bargain? Which was? Number 4. Al Pacino, Heat. Cut and dried. That is it. With all due respect to Mr. Pacino, it could be argued that he occasionally overacts. Case in point, his performance as Lieutenant Vincent Hanna in 1995's Heat, a role that sees Pacino officially transform into a wild-eyed caricature of himself. During a conversation about great asses, Pacino essentially loses his mind and decides that he's gonna pull every trick in the book. Why'd I get mixed up with that bitch? Cause she got a great ass! And you got your head all the way up it! He screams, he uses his hands, he even incorporates some type of accent, almost like he's channeling his Scarface character, another role in which he did not hold back. No, I'm not all right. This, you know, and when I get back there, I'm gonna kick some ass all over that fucking place. Still, it's one of the most comedic ass soliloquies ever captured on film, further cementing Pacino's legacy of extreme overacting. All I want is her husband and his whole fucking crew. Now you're gonna work with Sergeant Trucker here. Number three, Dennis Hopper, Blue Velvet. Oh, mommy, mommy. In David Lynch's cult classic, Dennis Hopper doesn't play the typical bad guy. He plays an absolute maniac. Frank Booth projects a tough guy image, but he's also got some unresolved issues. Hopper makes this clear during a crucial scene with plenty of ranting and raving, which is both awkward and highly entertaining. Hopper curses like he's the first man to ever curse on camera, all the while sucking away on some mysterious gas. It's bizarre and comically over the top, which makes it a classic Hopper moment, as he tries so very hard to entertain us. Mission accomplished. <laughs> Number 2. Nicolas Cage, Matchstick Men Excuse me. Hi. I'm I'll be right with you, sir. As far as shameless overacting goes, Nicolas Cage remains in a league of his own. He easily could have taken this spot with the phenomenal B sequence from The Wicker Man. Oh, no, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! I'm losing my eyes! My eyes! Ah! Or his rendition of the alphabet in Vampire's Kiss. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z! But arguably Mr. Cage's most comically absurd performance was delivered in Ridley Scott's Matchstick Men. Here's what happens. Cage stars as a con artist with both Tourette's Syndrome and Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. And you better believe he takes full advantage of the opportunity. Hey buddy, ever heard of a lie? Hey, have you ever been dragged to the sidewalk and beat until you pissed blood? It's a dream role for someone like Cage, a man that applies over-exaggerated theatrics to every role. And it's for all of us, Mojoholics. It's for all of us. They're prefects. They're supplements, sir. They're, Bullshit, they're man! Prefects! Supplements. Prefects! Aisle four, prefects. sir. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. I don't think we should talk about it. 
Yes, you're prepared to kill them. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Oh, I have a headache. It might be a tumor. It's not a tumor. It's not a tumor at all. What I meant was, you tell me, who is your daddy and what does he do? Number one, Tommy Wiseau, The Room. It's over! It's not over. Everybody betrayed me. I fed up with this world. What is there to say about director, producer, writer, and star of The Room, Tommy Wiseau? He is a mysterious man, oh he of indecipherable accent, oddball behavior, and most importantly, melodramatic acting technique. But this cocktail of personality traits managed to produce what's been called the Citizen Kane of bad movies. The Room is basically a series of non sequiturs tangled together in a questionable and overcomplicated plot. However, Wiseau's over the top performance is the glue that holds it all together. Whether he's buying flowers, complaining that he didn't beat his girlfriend, or basically just screaming hysterically, Wiseau is proving he's a true disaster artist. Oh. Cut. Why are you cut, Sandy? This is great. This is real acting. If you're gonna ride around with the dress, maybe do it before you shoot yourself in the head and blow your brains out. I disagree. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo and subscribe for new videos every day.